mysteries abound out of a great energy America. I'm Zach Nanimus. Johnny Dam. And joining us today is... Pixelation. Hi, everybody. What's going on? Pixelation is a buddy of ours. He's, uh, he, he's a very good friend of ours who we have met three four times. times. Is it four? <laughs> <laughs> For three years, we see each other at a convention. We're like, we should definitely do a mashup. Yeah. Uh, do a collab, and now it's finally happening. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't know where to look. We have two cameras. No, no, <laughs> you're right, we do. Um, this one doesn't matter, because we're not doing video with him. We're just doing audio. Mm -hmm. So this one was is hooked up, but it's not. It doesn't matter. This one is the one you need to look at, because okay. that's the one that gets broadcast to the world. Okay, so James, yes, pixelation. Uh, for, uh, for audience members who uh, don't, know, uh, don't know about your channel, what is it exactly that you do? Uh, I do a lot of anime content. I also say that I do gaming content, but lately that is not exactly true. I'm working on fixing that, but um, yes, anime and gaming content uh, reviews mostly. I also do a lot of nope. convention vlogs because I go to a lot of cons in Austin and Houston. And, um, I'm hoping to maybe possibly go to San Japan in September or in August, September, but uh, that'll be my first like out of Austin, Houston con. Um, yeah, but I do a lot of reviews, a lot of scripted reviews. Um, I'm not exactly confident with my improv ability, so I don't do as much improv content, but um, I'm working on fixing that. Oh, and, uh, we're not confident either. We're just not going to write anything. <laughs> <laughs> we just, we that tried. Is fair, that is a fair point. <laughs> yeah. No, we would do that. It would, just, it would just be a pain every time, and it would take long. Yeah, the writing process is long, Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm saying, we just, we've just decided not to write stuff. Yeah, how long have I been working on my Sonic... Uh, my Sonic episode. You've talked about it a few times. A few times. <laughs> now, yeah. <laughs> so, if, uh, so when you fix the whole uh, anime gaming balance problem, are you gonna do anime style games like uh, is is it Goddess Sword? I think that's. I'm trying. Uh, I'm trying to think. Bayonetta. Of, I'm trying to think of the filthiest one. Is Bayonetta technically anime? No. No, it's not. You're right. That was a mistake. But there <laughs> is. We were talking about Attack on Titan earlier, and there's at least one or two games in that department. Do we ever get? Yeah. Do we ever get the board game out of that? They kept talking about it. I, I don't know if it ever got off the ground. Do you remember that, James? Uh, board game. We're talking. I mean, I wouldn't doubt it exists, but I I have no idea. I'm not a board game guy, so it, I would not be uh, the one to ask about that. Oh. It, was, it was like a Kickstarter thing. Uh, I think. I don't know. And it had a vertical board, so basically yeah. the board was the a titans. titan that was a cardboard standee. Oh wow, that's actually kind of cool. Yeah, and so yeah. No, to... yeah. I mean, to, to answer your question though, yes, I I I, uh, I will eventually end up covering anime-based games, but I also uh, mostly because I have connections with a bunch of uh, companies that do those kinds of games. Like for example, I'm working on uh, playing through a game called the Caligula Effect, which is um, uh, published by NIS America, and it's actually had an anime based on it, um, and. It's all right. I won't like spoil the review, but like I'm only two chapters in, and I'm kind of dreading going back into it. But oh no, really? you know what <laughs> I you know what I would say, like if you're doing it for review purposes, your review can end there. Yeah. <laughs> if you're dreading well, going back to the game, everyone should know. <laughs> yeah, Persona Five. It was a, it was I, you know I, it was one of those things where, like I put a hundred hours into it because it was just really really good, but with. Caligula Effect, it's the same kind of game where it feels like Persona 5, but it's not Persona 5, so... You know, I, uh, I, I weirdly, I met a fellow nerd in a grocery store, and we started chatting, and he had nothing but good things to say about Persona, and I had nothing to say except once I, I was trying to watch a friend play it, and so we were just kind was of Was that talking. Joe Davis? Huh? Yeah, it, was, uh, it was our buddy Talon. Oh! Yeah. Joe loves playing those, too. And he, um, you know, we were kind of just chatting for like three hours, and they were in this same limousine ride <laughs> the whole time. Oh, yeah. And oh, it's, was, it's a slow game. I was like, when does the yeah, game it, start? It's got a slow burn for sure, but like once you get to the end and you like, the, the culmination of everything that's happened to that point is just like, it's like, it's like crack. It's just, it's just really good. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm not saying glow, crack is good, right. but it's just you, you get my point. for crack. <laughs> I think that's the real takeaway from this. Um, no, I've actually heard a lot of good, re- great reviews for it, but I've also heard if you're not into that genre, it's it's a pain to get through. But yeah, you got to be into sure. that type of that game. But no, I double checked the Attack on Titan board game. Not only exists, and it is exactly as we said, but you, you can scale the, the Titan, or you can scale one of these Oh, towers. it's actually pretty cheap. It's $20. Yeah, for a really yeah. interesting game. Yeah, I think we need to buy this and, and do a Let's Play of it. Definitely, because you don't know much about Attack on Titan, do you? I've seen the first season. Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, know, I know stuff. Is there already a second season? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were talking about it earlier. We're on, like, season three at the end of season three right now. But, okay, what's available on Netflix? Uh, Probably one and two, I'd say. Okay. Yeah, because I like it, but it's one of those animes where there's a lot of moving parts uh, yeah. and a lot of names that are difficult to keep track of and a huge amount of deaths. So I, t- I tell people that I like Attack on Titan, and that, and then they're like, oh, hey, what do you, th- what, what do you think of, uh, uh, of Akira's arc when he loses both legs and they have to replace his blood with Titan blood and then his girlfriend leaves him? And I'm like, what happened <laughs> to the thing I like so much? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, now, I suggest we change gears. Right, right now? Well, I guess you guys have been talking anime for a bit. We have. And we'll, and we'll, we'll, yeah, and we'll, what, maybe maybe this is the game then. Maybe maybe since James hasn't seen these other things that we're going to talk about, <laughs> he can somehow relate them to anime. <laughs> okay. I mean, first one on the, on the list I'm looking at right there is going to be real easy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don't you doubt me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you doubt my ignorance. <laughs> um, do you want to go with that then? It's going to be a short segment because I'm the only one who's seen it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So go ahead, make the transition. You're the one. You're the you're the big guy with the mouth. I I don't know where I was going with that. But you're usually the guy who <laughs> the guy with the who mouth. manages the. Uh, so our first. Uh, our first segment is going to be about porn. <laughs> no! No, 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 yeah. no, I made a mistake! <laughs> okay, um, he wants to talk a little, if I'm reading his phone correctly, uh, he's gonna. he wants to talk about a movie no one saw except for him. Mm-hmm. Called, that's, that's not true. Uh, Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Right, and to... to uh... To reiterate, so... <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> okay, okay, then. I've got this weird character on today. I've got no <laughs> idea why. So, so... People did see this movie. Um, the, the the personal anecdotal evidence is not there, though, because when I went to the theater, I actually took a picture and tweeted it out that I was the first one in the theater and, and 12 the minutes... And one in the theater. <laughs> actually, that's true. Uh, 12, 12 minutes before the movie started, I was the only person in the theater. Um, and I did stay, because I knew I figured there was an after credit scene, because there was in the last Godzilla movie, and I was right. Uh-huh. No one else stayed for it. Um, okay. So that sounds like the movie's bad. Based on that that evidence, right? I mean, it just means it's not popular, right? But uh, people did see this movie. Not as many that saw the the last Godzilla movie. Um, Diminishing returns is what we call that, right? But they they're they're about to make back their money. There's like 147 thousand 147 million budget when they release the Dunkaroos tie-in. Godzilla Dunkaroos. Yeah, that's it. That's how they're gonna make their money that's back. Gonna, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> No, but they, they're, they're doing, the movie's doing fine, and they've actually already finished production on Godzilla vs. King Kong. They've actually already finished filming it and everything. Why? I'm looking forward to that. Well, okay, why? Because they're giant monsters and they're fighting. James? Is he gone? Did we lose him without knowing it? James? Ah, ah there he is. James? Wait, what's up? There he goes. <laughs> were you were you listening? <laughs> no, we, we we lost the connection there for a second. But okay. um, but go ahead. What was your question for James? Okay, James. Yes. Godzilla versus King Kong. Yes. Is the promise of a fight between two characters who have no arc, uh, with a with a completely flat arc, uh, is that enough to sell a movie to you? Uh. I think it would be entirely based off the brand. The the idea of, you know, King Kong and Godzilla have both been staples of the monster genre for, like, 100 years now. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, it, it, if anything, it's like, hey, we're putting these two characters in, in, a, in, a, in a ring together. You know, it's kind of like, you know, like Mike Tyson versus a baby or something like that. You know? <laughs> King Kong, I will have you know that King Kong is a historical landmark like that that original king kong is in a very important movie to american cinema that's true and it's become kind of a joke sure (laughs) (laughs) 
Would I just have Donkey Kong at this point. Let's just. That would be great to introduce Donkey Kong. They should get all the Kongs, get all the get all the gorillas together. Look, look, look. Here's the thing: Detective Pikachu and Sonic the Hedgehog are the beginnings of the Smash Bros. Cinematic Universe. Let's throw, <laughs> ahead, throw Donkey Kong in there. Oh, come on. I would watch a Smash Brothers universe movies. They should get they should get as big as the MCU. They should just do them all. Yes. Uh, and honestly, a lot of people didn't like it, um, but it was called the sub uh, was the sub not sub ether. Subspace emissary. The subspace emissary. I actually like that arc. Oh no, that's cool. Yeah. I liked it. I haven't <laughs> finished it, but yeah. I've done it like three times. I just like Are you talking it. about one of the older ones or the newer ones? It's one? for Brawl. Okay, okay. Uh, I don't have... Uh, my understanding is that the new one... Does it have a story mode at all? It does. It does. You start as just Kirby, and then you have to unlock... But it's kind of a mix between a board game and a story. <laughs> okay, that's not bad. Yeah, it's, it's huge. It's massive. Okay, here's the deal. We're talking, we're talking Godzilla King of the Monsters. Yeah, we are. And we're segueing into... We are. We did, we did. Speculating, speculating on the sequel. Right. Okay, I think we've had this conversation before. James... Godzilla versus King Kong, who wins? They uh, have they have a, a DBZ style empty plane to fight in. Okay, I'll say that. There's no there's, okay. Uh, I would say okay. So God, okay, correct me if I'm wrong. Doesn't Godzilla have like T Rex arms? Yes, very. So, like, no, so, not like, King King Kong has like the actual human arms. He could like rip them apart, right? Yes. I wouldn't call them human arms because he's an ape. Well, yeah, but closest, <laughs> closest, out of the two monsters, he is the closest thing to like this opposable thumbs Correct. that he can like rip rip things apart. Yes, yes, but if I'm not mistaken, he's a little bit smaller than King Kong. No, no, King Kong's a little bit smaller. Yeah, oh yeah, King Kong's a little smaller than himself. No, than Godzilla. <laughs> um, maybe. I, I think. But anyway, go ahead. What, what's your what's your assessment of the fight? Oh, okay. So I I don't know how much you heard before because. My internet's terrible, but anyway, no. Um, what I was saying is that you know he's the he's the closest thing out of those two monsters to something that has opposable right. thumbs, and therefore he can like rip things apart. Whereas Godzilla would be like trying, but he couldn't mm -hmm. to reach him. You know. Mm -hmm. okay. is, that, is that is that it? You just think they got, that got? Yeah. yeah. You... So I, I, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say King Kong would would take that. It may it may be a close fight because Godzilla has a little fiery breath or whatever, but uh... yeah, King Kong. Well, I, I think the advantage goes to Godzilla, in my opinion. But God's, the thing that King Kong, I think you're right, with is the opposable thumbs um, and, and all that kind of stuff does go to his advantage. I think he's also faster than Godzilla. Mm -mm. Yeah. He, okay, he's, he may be more agile. Right. Here's the thing about Godzilla. He does not breathe fire. No, it's like a he breathes nuclear. nuclear. Yeah. It's nuclear breath. And he can actually use it to propel himself. It's that powerful. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry that I. I'm sorry that I didn't know all the nerdy shit about. Godzilla. You're an anime guy. It's Japanese. <laughs> it's Japanese. It's anime. Hey, that's racist. <laughs> um. No, I. I. Okay. They're. I think they're gonna. The way that, especially with the end credit scene that happened in uh, King of the Monsters. What I think is going to happen, and they, they actually tease the... How was the movie? You... I know, we haven't even gotten there yet. Yeah. Here's, here's, my, here's my whole, whole uh, review. It is ridiculous. It is obscene. It is weird. <laughs> it does not make a lot of logical sense. All right. But it's a fun movie. Okay. I liked it. I can appreciate that. Yeah. Because I was frustrated about a quarter of the way through. I kept poking holes in all their logic, and I was like, why are they even... This is so dumb. And then they did this one little twist, and I was like, no, I'm on board. This is cool. And I just enjoyed the rest of the movie. What What is the movie even about? Like, I know Godzilla is there. Yeah, so Monarch Monarch is basically, they, as you find out to the King Kong movie and the last Godzilla movie, they kind of they kind of kept have trying to keep tabs on all the... You're talking about Skull Island. No, no, no. I'm talking about Monarch the Organization. They're, they're the ones that actually manage all the, like, they, they know, they're figuring out where these monsters are either frozen in ice, hiber hibernating. The, the production company. Yeah, I guess, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so they so, and then they're, in the beginning of this, mo this movie, they're basically in front of Congress trying to defend what they're doing, and, and Congress is like, no, the military needs to take this over, you need to help the military. And, and that's where it starts... And so not the movie production company. Monarch is a... I'm sorry, I, I thought the production company as in... 
I thought you meant like I thought you said, I thought you said protection. No. Okay. Okay. Because because that's <laughs> kind of what they do. Throwing monarch around like it's a thing. It, it, it is in the movie. I, th- I think it's in the Japanese ones too. James. He he probably doesn't know. James left. James left the call. He got bored with my discussion. <laughs> um, no, so so the movie so Monarch is is it's a company that basically is trying to manage the monsters. They're trying to either because uh, there's differing. Uh, Why? See, you're already doing what I did. <laughs> Um, so, the, so the, th- the thing is, Monarch is trying to, like I said, some of the people in Monarch and the, and the higher ups believe that they're supposed to be like a, a, a I forget the, the word, but it's basically where, pe- basically where humans and, and these monsters can live in harmony, and some of them, where some of them are, are trying to hurt, are trying to destroy the world, and and the, and though they believe Godzilla is a protector, because that's kind of what he, what he did in the, in the 2014 movie. Is that he fought the other bad I monster? I never saw. I didn't think he did. Yeah. Um, but he is fought. That the, is that the John Krasinski movie? No, you're thinking of uh, Breaking Bad Guy. Yeah, Breaking Bad Guy. Yeah. <laughs> Breaking Bad Guy. Um, Brian Cranston. Yeah, Brian Brian Cranston. He's in that one. Um, so. But that's like in in the 2014 one, he fights other monsters. He fought a other monster, one and other monster. Other. Yeah, he, and which was trying to breed and create more monsters, bigger monsters that were going to destroy the world. That is a stupid idea for a first Godzilla movie. Whatever. Um, so that's that's what happened. And uh, so the theory is that, that Godzilla is a good guy. And he, and he, and the, the, my favorite line though, just to give you an idea of how ridiculous this movie is, my favorite line in the movie made me, I laughed like out loud in the theater and I usually don't do that. And this was, um, <laughs> even the comedies? Usually. Okay. Unless it's something really, really funny. Okay. Um, but this, this guy, okay. So, 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 so they're, they're, they've, they've discovered this, uh, What's his name? K- 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 Kagira or something like that. The one that has the the three heads. It looks like a dragon. I'm not sure. A- anyway, so I he... know Mothra, Godzilla, Gamera, Jet. Jam- Gamera. I think it's Gamera. Gamera's the turtle. Okay, Gamera's the turtle. Uh, but anyway, so they're talking about him, and it was hilarious. Their their little uh, researcher that's part of Marnark. She's like, I, I've I've torn through all the records and all the history and all the books, and I can't find anything on him. So, it's almost like they were afraid to record him, or they were afraid to write about him. I'm like, what kind of cop out is that? Are you kidding me? Just because he's not in the record book? Oh, there must be. Uh, you can make up anything. There must be incredible Wi-Fi in the Sea of Japan. <laughs> he's like, they better not say anything bad about me on Facebook. <laughs> it was hilarious. Um, the movie... I will end Okinawa. Right. <laughs> For just the wrong emoji, <laughs> you have no idea. The uh, the movie I thought was good. I actually gave it a solid seventy two. Yeah. Yeah, because it was it is ridiculous and it's a little long at times. James. Oh, hey. there oh, he I is. I want to go to James. I want to go to James Coney. How uh, how did you feel about the Brian Cranston Godzilla movie? Uh, me, I never seen it. Okay. That's two of you. I'm the only Godzilla fan here. Actually, and I'm I'm a very casual Godzilla fan. <laughs> I'm not a. Okay, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, James. I was gonna say I don't I don't see y'all. I don't know if that's in, if that y'all if I need to see y'all or not. But no, you know, no, we're we're good. We got the we got, uh, your audio is coming through and it's being recorded, so it's all good. Okay, cool. Um, I'm uh, honestly the the scale of Godzilla movies. I don't find, uh, I don't find terribly impressive or interesting. Here you go, James. Like, when the problem is that big, there's only a few stories you can tell. Yeah, but I mean, we get, when it comes down to it, it's just a, it's a like, it's, you said this about, um, what the hell's the name of that other giant monster movie? The one with, um, uh, the, Black Stormtrooper. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. John Boyega. Yeah, the that's the guy. Uh, Pacific Rim. Yeah, you you said that was a fun monster movie. Uh, Paci- uh Pacific the second one. At Pacific least. Rim was a fun monster movie. Uh, the scale was a little lower, um, and um, like they they actually had a uh, they actually had a walker droid that was small and can do like fun things with the buildings and stuff like that. Oh boy! Okay. You know, and, All right. Uh, you know, they had special weapons and they had things to do outside of the outside of the robots and stuff like that. Like when your title character's Godzilla, there's like a few things he can do 
That's it. Okay. So I'm not going to convince you that it was good. But <laughs> I, I enjoyed it, and if anyone out there likes Godzilla movies, I don't know, go, go watch it. Fine. There. Maybe I will. Fine. I wasn't judging it, honestly. <laughs> no, know. I'm not. It's but, just you're, like, you're, but you're, you're, you're speculating that there's not much they could do with it. Godzilla doesn't get me excited. Yeah. Uh, well, it gives now, me, he gives me rock hard. He really does. Yeah. I can see it right now. Yeah. Now, it's like, like it's you can't, what I'm saying with like some of these. you're wearing a red shirt and red pants. I am. <laughs> <laughs> so the, um, what, what I found, like some of the ridiculousness of it is like, they keep talking about the radiation that he gives off and the radiation that a lot of the other monsters give off. Is it well, ionizing radiation? Uh, I'm just saying that they're all, they would all be dead. Like every single person. Not if it's not ionizing. Well, I would imagine it is. I mean, you can, but, you know, we're being bathed in radiation right now. We're safe because it's... Okay, you know what I want to talk about now? All right. I want to... You know what? Let, this... James, let James choose. Okay, here, okay James, these, these are the options. All right, we can talk about Swamp Thing, which you haven't seen. We can talk about Orville, which you haven't seen. Or we can talk about what we've been playing, playing or watching so everyone would have something to say. We can do the watching thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. also, just, and also, just 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 to be safe, maybe we should do that anyway, because my connection is on its last limb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get that out of the way, and then we can just you can just knock you right the hell off. We really can. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. um, um, no uh, you have the power. We're gonna go with me first because I have a segue that I was I was prepping for. All right. So I've been this, watching. This better be so good. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching. <laughs> I've been watching Chernobyl. It's a miniseries on HBO. Mm -hmm. And it is very good. And I've seen what radiation can do to a person. Mm -hmm. Like, in graphic detail. And so that's what made me think of the Godzilla thing. It's because everybody who got within a certain uh, radius of him would die a terrible, terrible death. If it's ionizing radiation. If it's ionizing radiation, yes. <laughs> but it's... I mean, it's, it's, I would, no, it is. It is. Because there's something that happens in the movie I just remembered. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. They said it out loud? No, they, yes. Well, not they didn't say those words, but they, they talked about how they couldn't go into Godzilla's hibernating lair because they would die immediately. Okay. Yeah. Okay, a buddy, uh, a buddy of mine uh, was, was talking about some stuff that he learned about Chernobyl. I don't know if he learned it from that, from that series or not. Um, but he said that at one point they were doing 40-second shifts. Correct. 90 seconds. 90-second shifts. Yeah. All right. What do you do in a 90-second workday? What they, what they were trying to do was just clear the roof off of the graphite that was inside the core of the, of the reactor because it was on top of the roof, and they were trying to knock it back into where the reactor was. Okay. And they were told, do not look over that edge. If you look down into the reactor, you're fucked. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so was there like a constant conveyor belt of dudes that was like just kind of like... No, there was... So inside the... So there, there, there were different levels of roofs. So they were in a building that was higher than that roof. So there was a door that went out to that roof. And there was a guy that was basically running the crew. And he would... What he would do is he was like, okay, everybody go. And there'd be like three or four of them that would run out on the roof with their gear on. And they'd have 90 seconds. And they actually showed a real time 90 seconds of them doing this. And uh -huh. they were trying to move these, this graphite off the roof. And um, <clears throat> so then what he would do is he had a shovel, and he would hit it against a pipe when 90 seconds was up. Boom, boom, boom. And then they would all come running back in, and then the next crew would go out. And they would have to go, and they would have to get basically washed down. And one of the guys, this is kind of a dramatic part. I, not, I hope I'm not giving too much away, but he gets his boot torn. Because of, oh yeah no oh yeah this 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 movie or this mini series is so good. It is so good. Um, it is. It really tells you really how bad it was, and the awful, terrible things that these people had to do and uh -huh. did deal with. It was. It's because a lot of the. I think the true impact of Chernobyl. We we don't really understand because we weren't there. They don't. And and Russia was hush hush about the whole thing. They didn't, oh sure. They didn't want to tell people what happened. Mm -hmm. And so there was kind of a uh, this whole big thing about it of them keeping it under wraps and because they didn't want the international community to know. But like the radiation was so bad. They. I think that it was in one of the. Don't quote me on this. I, I think it was Sweden. One of those countries over there that actually picked up the radiation from there, like that's how bad it was. I don't know if it was Sweden, but you know, it was one of those countries in that area. I don't know. It was Norway. Norway definitely felt it. Um, my dad actually, um, I was born like two days uh, uh, inside the disaster, like which when is 
what makes you right. the modern Godzilla. Exactly. And um, but no, my dad was in was in. Uh, he was actually working at the nuclear power plant here in Texas, just south of us. Nuclear. What did I say? Nuclear. nuclear. Nu- okay, nuclear. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so he was actually wearing the South Texas Project um, with his, uh, uh, and he went to college with a guy that was living in Norway when the, when it actually happened, and he told him he, he was telling him all about it. Anyway, it's a whole big thing. I got my, my dad super interested in seeing it, so I'm gonna I'm gonna. You're straight up sweating. I have to. Watch it's just this. hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> it gets hot in here in our studio with the door closed. Um, we got five, six lights. Um, but anyway, I've been watching that. I watched the first episode of Swamp Thing, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, been playing some Golf Story and streaming it. Yeah. And um, that's a lot of fun. I love that game. It's so much fun. Um, and then what else have I been watching? Oh, I've been watching bits and pieces of This Is Us because that's what Frank Frank is streaming right now. What is This Is Us? You don't know what This Is Us is? No. It's the, the show you watch when you want to cry. What's it about? It's about a family. <laughs> real, real, real quick, I just want to interject real fast. Go ahead. If you if you are excited about This Is Us and you won't watch it watch it no 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 slice, slice the light anime you're, you are, no. you have your, your priorities <laughs> james james i will have you go back I, I, will, I will i will play this back for you i said i've been watching it i said i haven't been enjoying it <laughs> I, I have been watching pieces of it because because my uh my girlfriend watches it and that's all she'll watch right now so if i'm in the living room that's what we're watching which uh okay oh. uh, i thought you i thought you meant you checked out a, a slice of life anime and i was wondering which one no, uh, no. James convinced you to watch. No, no, no. We were just talking about it earlier because we were talking about what I like as far as anime goes. The thing, okay, the thing about anime is, is that it sets the bar really high for expectation mm-hmm. because of like anime has got kind of a reputation. You know, it's either it's either really gory, really silly, or really cutesy, or, or, or sexy. Right. And so, like, if you you watch twenty, you know, you around minute nineteen, you're like, I, I'm supposed to. <laughs> oh, did you lose him? No, I think he came back. Like, around minute nineteen, you're supposed to be like, okay, there's either supposed to be blood or boners, one or the other. <laughs> you're right. Like, what are, what are we doing here? I remember, I don't know why, someone else had put this on when we were at SanCon. This was years ago. Someone it was we stayed the night there. It was, anyway, this guy put this on on the big screen, and it was this anime, like spy anime, of these girls. Literally, you could count on a panty shot every two minutes. Okay. It was ridiculous. Was anybody keeping track of the specific ages of the characters? Because oh, no. sometimes sometimes they're real loosey-goosey with that. It makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, absolutely. They are. <laughs> no, let me get through this real quick. So I've also been watching... I also finished the second season of Barry, which is an amazing show. I've seen a little bit of Barry. I love Barry. Uh, and I also watched uh, finished off Crashing, what was, what was released on that. I think it was season three. Crashing's really good, too. Is that the spin-off to Crash? No, it is not. It is the uh, HBO show that Pete Holmes did. Does okay. Yeah, uh, James. <laughs> <laughs> James. Yeah. All right. Real quick, what have you what have you been watching? What have you been getting into lately? Well, I've been watching y'all sound like robots because over here, y'all, your voice sounds like robots. No. Uh, in, in all fairness, um, yes. What have I been watching? Anime counts, I imagine. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that's basically all I watch now. I am. I am a slave. Um. Now. Uh, Wait. Say it again. He's. Well, 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 I, was gonna say, I was gonna say. I. I. It's all, pretty much all I watch nowadays because I am a slave to anime. But, um. Hold on one second. Let me. There you go. Okay. Talk. Hello. Hello. Y'all. Y'all are back. You're all right. Okay. We're back, baby. Every time. It, it's like every time it goes out and goes back in, it's like y'all like the voices like become all robotized. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. So, but, so, uh, so yeah, are yeah, you yeah. saying are you saying you're a slave to anime? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Okay. Fair. Why? Fair. And it went out again. Awesome. Yeah. We can hear you. <laughs> the, the connection still exists. Yeah, it's it just goes in and out. It's really dumb. I don't. We we pay too much money for this shit. Anyway, um, the uh, like I was telling Johnny earlier, I. I start. I am actually about to about ten minutes away from finishing, uh, or catching up with uh, Attack on Titan, and I love that show to death. It's it's just like, it's it's got me. It's got me. Um, also, I'm trying to think. I just finished. Uh, there's a there's a show that y'all have been seeing me tweet about called the Quintessential Quintuplets, and that is. Uh, <laughs> I, I missed out on that. <laughs> 
What's up? I missed out on those tweets. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, whoever runs the Warlocks account has been uh, liking them. So that's me. I didn't know who. <laughs> that's me. Okay, that's you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's a pretty good one. Um, very much a kind of refinement of the slice of life genre. Um, I'm actually going to have a video about it soon. Um, and then, you know, like, whenever, um, whenever I go work out, I, I watch anime while I work out so I can knock out some of the stuff that I'm in my, that's in my queue. And also it makes the time go by faster because I, I hear you. No, I hear you. I, I li- time is a mandated construct. Yeah. But, um, do you fall asleep so to anime? I, no. Is there any part of your day? Okay. <laughs> yeah no i i don't i i, I yeah no i yeah now that i'm ta- that i'm talking about it, it it sounds really bad but yeah. it's just like <laughs> if it helps i recently took a long break and watched the entirety of almost the entirety of gotham and game of thrones season eight and no eight that doesn't help between. that helps <laughs> that that is one negative and one positive both both of us hate gotham yeah, well, I mean, I, I like it, but I also understand why you would hate it. It's like, it's a, it's a hate watcher. It's, it's one of those things where it's like, I'm like, I'm okay with it. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm a Batman fan, so I'm not going to like it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it bastardizes a lot of the, the, the Batman lore, and I'm not saying I'm a purist, but, I mean, they take some serious liberties. And you know how can how how can you talk about Gotham bastardizing the goth or the Batman lore when y'all haven't had a good Batman movie since Dark Knight? <laughs> I am a weirdo, and I actually like all the DC films. Wow. Yeah. Except I'm sorry. I should I should clarify. I, I admit that Suicide Squad was terrible. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's been a while coming. <laughs> yeah. I kept making excuses for it because I said I kept saying like, "Oh, there's a good movie in there." Just edited it out, and I'd say weird stuff like that to make. It's like D- DC films bastardizes their own lore. <laughs> well, yeah, I, there's a difference in like taking a creative license and doing something new with the characters, which I'm excited about when they do that. But Gotham just made it into like a weird, like I don't know, primetime drama. Not primetime, but like uh, a weird, like uh, like a network drama. To me, like they really went weird with it. I got like twenty minutes into the first. Ep- no, I'm sorry. I think I watched the entirety of the episode, uh, the first episode, because the first episode is the reveal uh, with Poison Ivy, the aptly named Ivy. Right. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's, I never said it was. So stupid, right. But it, but it is. It is definitely, uh, for me at least, it was an enjoyable um, kind of just like. It's a soap opera. It's one of those things where I'm not watching I, it to be yeah. surprised at who comes back to life. I know Fish Mooney comes back to life twenty times. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm abs- that's that's there, absolutely fair. It is. It absolutely is an, uh, a is, soap opera. Is there magic in it? Probably. Kind of. <laughs> um, Rasha Ghoul is kind of magic. Yeah. So I mean, I don't. I don't. I don't. I let's. I'm. Let me be clear. I'm not. I'm definitely not saying that there's you're anything lesser for for enjoying it. Enjoy it if you like it, but well, yeah, yeah. But um, but yeah, you're right. That 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 show is definitely the definition of ham-fisted. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey James. Yeah. Here here's a question for you. And so right. because we're talking we're talking about animes that we, that that you're watching right now, and and and, and other sort of things. I want to no give it to me. No I play. No no. you the mic is picking that up. <laughs> Um, okay. What changed about anime, like, since the 90s to make it so weird? Uh. Because I, and for those, for those of you don't, at home who don't have a lot of perspective on this, like, anime, like, a- anime in the 90s and prior to it, it was, it was, a, it was a lot of action. Pretty and, gritty. Uh, it, was, it, it could be gritty, but it could also be silly, and there were um, just, like, interesting plot points and relatable characters and stuff like that. And then somewhere along the way, everything got really clean, like, and visually. Everything yeah. everything got really clean, but also really cheap. Like, it feels like the frame rate dropped. Of course, you watch something from the 70s, that frame rate's going to be low. Um, but the frame rate dropped... The images got really, really clean, and everything got really cutesy and less relatable. What happened? Do you there? think it? I, just a theory uh, before okay. before James throws it in there. Uh, I, I imagine what you're like, like, well, what you're talking about is probably the move to a lot of computer generated uh, animation. That's part of it, yeah. but not not wholly so. Okay. 
So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out a couple of theories because you're right. You know, there it has been a very big shift, especially in the I would say a good uh, kind of point of reference for this shift would probably be like 2010s. Uh, once 2010s began, that's when things started kind of getting different. But the um, yeah, I, I, you know. I think there was a change in between the 90s and 2010s, but I think the biggest change, and this is what I'm going to reference, is going to be around the 2010s when that that, that happened. But uh, one theory that I have is that, and this may have always been the case, I don't know, but funding is very atrocious now for anime. They have, they, they you know, animators are working for pennies. They're, you know, they're doing it purely out of love for the art. They're not really doing it because it makes them rich. Um... Now, that being said, they, um, because they have such low funding, they have to work with what they're given, and therefore you get the lowest common denominator stuff. That's, that's, <laughs> not, to say that, that's not to say that the whole uh, industry is doomed, because you have studios like Kyoto Animation, who are, uh, they have, their workers are salaried, they're not based on freelance. So there is a, a, a movement, even if it's a small movement, to kind of... Um, it, it, focus on the quality rather than quantity. And that segues to another theory of mine is that because of the funding and because they have to make some kind of profit, there are so many new shows out every season. Like, probably 30, anywhere from 30 to 50 new anime shows every season. So that's times four. That's like 200 or 300 shows a year that somehow have to fight for your attention. It's like on YouTube... But the only difference is they're making money in, on, on, with anime, and, and we're not. Right. <laughs> so, so, so it's like it's it's with, you know, like uh, because of the fact that they have so many new shows, they have they, there's less of a focus on, you know, making. Whereas in the '90s, you know, you have like you had a lot, but you didn't have a lot, um, and you know, you had shows like Dragon Ball Z that could go on for 200, 300 episodes and, and without going on a break now you have shows that are that, like hey let's give them the beginning and hope that they sell enough to make the next part um is there a lot of that, pressure on each individual project to be the next dbz actually, or one piece i think in certain uh, circles yes uh, like black clover uh, anything anything by studio hero i think naruto tried to try to emulate it and they kind of succeeded because they managed to get 500 episodes. yeah i would say so um that was one of the success stories and you have stuff like um, you know, but Black Clover is is fighting for it. You know, they're they're in their eighties. I think the eighties episodes now. Or they're like eighty five episodes in, and so they're they're trying to, to kind of go for that. But um, it's very rare when you see a show that just goes on indefinitely, like 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 uh, Dragon Ball or Naruto did. Um, and, and and you'll find that it's mostly stuff by Toei Animation. By it's, it's mostly stuff by Toei Animation by. Uh, um, Hero, uh, you know, Hero Plus, all that. You know, you have uh, certain studios that are like, okay, we have the money to just fund this because we know that people are going to eat it up. But then you have studios like, I don't know, just a, just an offhand example. You've got studios like Shaft, okay, like that can't. I mean, like they they put so much effort into making things clean, and they have their style to uphold that they can't always make their shows last indefinitely like that but yeah okay uh, and there, there was one more thing i wanted to touch on and like definitely a glut of stuff like that and low funding makes uh, makes a lot of sense especially when i don't know i've been some uh, i've always been really uh uh i'm someone who's capable of like seeing the frames i can practically count them in real time um right. and so it, and so it bugs me but the other thing is that uh animes right now are super duper tropey yeah. Like it's like there's basically like three kinds of protagonists and then th and then like five kinds of fight scenes that they can have. It's right. you have like the the fish out of water overpowered guy who doesn't even know his own strength and then you've got like disinterested loner who's uh who's like I have to kill him because killing has to be done. <laughs> uh, and then there's like more of a uh, and, and then there's kind of a snarky like scoundrel, you know. Yeah. And that that's basically that's basically what you get. And then like it's, um, they're way overpowered. They way overpower everybody else. Um, 
It's a silly fight where they don't actually want to hurt the other person. It's a gang of uh, it's a gang of people that they sneak up on. It's a gang of people that they don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and honestly, I think that has a lot to do with the the fact that you know they ha you know the studios are looking at it like we have to just we have to make money somehow, and we know that you know shows like Dragon Ball or you know and things like that are popular and they will sell. So let's make something that's very similar, uh, tropey, you know like. I keep mentioning Dragon Ball, but like you know, there are plenty of shows that have been overwhelmingly popular in the last couple of years, uh, and they and there's a lot of times, just like with Hollywood, there's a lot of times where they try to emulate what's popular, and they try to uh, they're like, you know what, that what that succeeded. So if we do something similar, then yeah, you know, surely that's going to succeed too. Yeah, um, it happens in video example, games right now a lot, just because yeah. everything's a third person shooter sandbox with RPG elements because it works exactly. so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, so if well. it's not broke, don't fix it, you know. But then, in in the case of anime, sometimes you need to fix it, yeah. even if it isn't broke. But like, like for example, like Attack on Titan came out like, in 2013, and uh, the and then like right after that, within like two or three years, they had a uh, combinary of the Iron Fortress, which was it looked. Oh, well, so now I'm gonna since I have a moment. Um, no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> uh, the ha okay, okay, we're back. The habanero spicy fortress. <laughs> the habanero of the iron fortress. Um, I haven't watched it, but, but but based on like the previews of it, it looks like a like they they really took that 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 note from Attack on Titan and the directing style and the action, you know. And so it's one of those things where like if they they look at it like well, Attack on Titan revolutionized the world. Let's make something very similar and see how it does. Well, you see, and clearly. The fact that y'all have heard of Attack on Titan, but you haven't heard of Cabinary of the Unfortunate, proves that one of them was successful and one of them wasn't. Right. You, so. you know, I watched uh, Attack on Titan on a whim, mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't even know if it was going to be... Uh, I didn't know if it was going to be something for me. Um, and it was actually the storytelling. When people when people talk about Attack on Titan, they usually talk about, oh, you know, it's like a kaiju anime, or, you know, it's really, really gory. Um and I think the interesting thing about it is definitely that it's one of those stories, and I haven't seen season two or three, so I don't know how much disambiguation has happened. Right. But uh, Attack on Titan, at least in season one, was one of those stories that leaves you with a whole lot of questions and allows you to develop theories, mm -hmm. and I absolutely love those. And, y you know, you might laugh me out of the room on this one, because I, I haven't seen three, and maybe they answer it, but, like, my theory right now is that... Yeah, because the world that they understand and can easily observe is so small, I think that they're living in modern-day Earth, and the rest of the world is just fine. Like, we put all the Titans on one island, <laughs> and some people got stuck there, and they developed this, this weirdo culture around it. So, the, the real world. We put all these people on one island. <laughs> Let's see what shenanigans happen. Now. The whole thing's a reality show, actually. That would like, 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 like the Earth South Park episode where they, they make Earth into a reality show. Yeah. That would that would not be satisfying. That would not be satisfying. But the idea that all the Titans are on one island and the rest of the world is just fine because the Titans <laughs> can't get across, I would be fine with that. Yeah. Uh, so. Yes. <laughs> I was going to ask Zach what he's been watching. <laughs> Something weird. <laughs> Something really, really odd. Oh, yeah? Uh, right now, I am straight up addicted to um, uh, speed run progression videos. And basically, these are uh, these people are usually speed runners or tassers themselves. Uh -huh. um, and I was almost going to do the thing that they do in every episode, and that's explain what tassing is. I'm not going to do it. Uh, and basically, it's a uh, it's a brief, sometimes feature length history of how a speed run for a particular video game mm -hmm. got to where it is now. Sure, the the evolution of it. Uh, it yeah, I thought uh, I thought you were calling me out or something. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's actually kind of difficult to hear you. Oh. Um, just a little bit. Um, but there, uh, it's it's really really odd, because I had, uh, huh? No, that was you. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's really really odd, uh, because I had kind of an unkind thought during one of them. Uh oh. Uh, as it was the uh, it was the Mario Kart Wii episode, and I say episode. This is this is a lot of different people making these videos. Sure. Um, 
But a lot of them know each other and reference one another. Um, it's almost like its own little community on top of the speedrunning community. I digress. Uh, there was this... Uh, they, they find all of these ridiculous tricks uh, uh, through tassing, and people really work their ass off to get themselves frame perfect for these tricks. And this one guy, he, they, it's something they call an ultra, uh, an ultra shortcut, where basically you run around a smaller portion of the track and the game thinks you ran the whole track. Yeah. And so he, he keeps getting his time down real, real low on this one track. It's not like they're running the whole circuit. One track he's going for the speed run for. He makes it, it's something like a track, like an in, like three laps in like 24, se- uh, sure. 24 seconds. Um, and then his record stays for six years until he beats it again. Oh, <laughs> It's because no one else is doing it. <laughs> the thing is, the thing is, is that in order to do that, you gotta stay sharp. Yes. Okay. So with breaks in between for six years, he never st- he never really stopped playing Mario Kart Wii. <laughs> and like really, really specifically Mario Kart Wii, and really, really specifically this one track. Yeah. You know, it, it, I'm sure it didn't dominate all of his free time, but it was in there somewhere. Sure. Um, and, like, when he broke the record, six years later, he filmed, he videoed himself doing it, uh, and he was super excited. Of course. And my unkind thought was, man, what, what kind of accomplishment is that, really? (laughs) But here's the thing. I then, the nihilist in me was like, what kind of accomplishment is anything? At least the dude's happy. Sure. Bare minimum, the guy's happy. Absolutely. (laughs) I had this, I had a similar thought. Yeah. Earlier. Today, when I was really? trying to get no, here. No, no, before that. I was prepping for the show, and I was just watching random YouTube videos off to the side while I was doing some stuff. And um, there was this guy, his name is Jonathan, and uh, and he he was on The Price is Right, back when Bob Barker was still doing it. All right. And he had a Price is Right fan club, fan club at his high school, and he loved The Price is Right. He's the biggest fan of The Price is Right ever, and he got on... The Price is Right, and he got up to do... Did he immediately die in <laughs> shock? <laughs> he almost! <laughs> but it was like, he was the happiest I've ever seen anybody. And it was... I was like, I would never be... That would never be me. Yeah. But he's happy. So... Here's a question. Yeah. Did... Did he make it past the first round? No. Oh! He got... He was one of those ones where... Oh, he had, yeah, no! It was rough, yeah. So he, it was one of the ones where he had to guess the, the numbers in the, in the price of a car, and he got one off, one off. He almost made it. How do you, how do you not make a special? Okay, what they should have done. And Bob Bob felt bad about it too. He's like, I I'm, I really wanted him to win. That's poor planning. Yeah, but I'll tell you why. Um, they don't have to bend the rules for uh, for the kid. What they have to do is invite the whole fan club. And the fan to club, another show. No, no, no. Well, I can say another episode. If they're gonna have him on, if they're gonna have him on the episode, yeah, they should have invited the whole fan club. Sure. That way, um, you know, it's friendly competition, and somebody from the fan club is gonna win. Right. You know. Uh, hey, James. He's he's gone right now. Oh, let's, he'll be back I lost in just a second. I'll, I'll just say we can go ahead and okay, here he is. Hey, James. Yeah. Um, we'll go ahead and let you go now. That way, we can what? stop dealing with this bad connection. Okay, uh, real quick before I let you go, while y'all were on the topic of uh, YouTube videos that y'all been watching, yeah. I wanted to just uh, go for it. One last, I want to do a plug. Not not that he needs a plug because he's like hilariously big, but uh, lately I've been kind of addicted to watching Mr. Beast videos. Have y'all ever watched him? The L.A. Beast? Uh, no, just no, that's Mr. Mr. Beast. Beast. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, no, 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 no. I'm I'm thinking of someone else. But yeah, go ahead. Okay, so uh, if you haven't. And, and there was anybody watching, for some reason, if you have, I mean, I only recently got a, got a you know, got a, tuned on to him, but uh, he is ridiculous. He does videos where he will, like, because he has basically screw you money. Like, he has uh, yeah, yeah. money that he, he looks at it like, I don't like money, I want to give it to everybody. So he'll do, like, philanthropic events and stuff like that. He'll, like, give money to charity and, and give, I, I go buy entire stores worth of food and give it to uh, a food bank and things like that, but he makes a he makes a spectacle out of it. Mm-hmm. So like like for example, there's one where he's like, I'm gonna hire a bunch of people to come and help me 
clean out the shelves of this store and we are going to give everything to charity. And so they make a whole day of it. Yeah. Uh, things like that. There's that. And they're like, hey, here's $50,000. If you, you know, or technically it's 13, but it's like, you know, 13 among several friends. You have an hour to spend it. Anything you don't spend is mine. Basically, things <laughs> like that. And so, and so, so like, I've been really addicted to these videos because it's just, it, it, it's increasing levels of like, what the heck, you know? And uh, I just really, like, I really want more people to watch him because I just, it, he's, a, he's a, he seems like a good dude. Yeah, absolutely. What, what's his through line, or is he just a personality that goes and does various oh, I, stuff? I, I, I think I remember hearing that he started on uh, doing Minecraft Let's Plays back in the day, and he just got so big that he makes just buku money on, like, uh, merch sales and ad revenue and sponsor deals, and he just has a continuous stream of millions of dollars that he just wants to give away to people <laughs> and it just blows my mind because i'm like that's what we all aspire to be is like someone who just has unlimited money and just was like hey here here's a thousand dollars have fun you know things like that that would so, be nice yeah like, it would be everyone nice. i meet in one day give them a thousand dollars yeah that'd be, that'd be fun and then they in turn owe me their lives, <laughs> and I create a shadow network, like the movie The Shadow. That sounds like just, that really just sounds like slavery. <laughs> this, is, this is a, uh, this is a, the, the origin story of a supervillain, just saying. Yeah, <laughs> thousand bucks, man. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and get out of y'all's hair. Thank y'all for having me on. I Absolutely. I appreciate that. Of course. Um, hey. Do y'all mind if I do a small plug? No, not, not at all. For it. And, by the way, check the, uh, any, any link that he's talking about right now, check the, uh, uh, check the description. description of this video, and there will be links for you to follow. Awesome. Yeah, I, I'm Pixelation. I'm, I'm a YouTuber. I'm he's still super small, but, you know, if you if you like anime, if you like games, then uh, check me out. Hey, give me give me a sub if you want. Um, I'm also on Facebook, on Twitter, uh, Instagram. I just recently started Snapchat where I just post the weirdest stuff. Like, they, re they, have, a, they have a filter. Uh, where you are a uh, cat. They have a cat filter. And I just posted, like, a video of me. Meow. <laughs> so, so, like, Snapchat is, like, an experiment. it's, like, an experimental thing for me. It's, like, I'm just, like, posting really weird stuff. But, um, but yeah, yeah, I, I just, I'm on pretty much everything. If you like what, if you, what you're hearing, if you like what you see later, when you check the channel, then, yeah, I'd, I'd love to have your support. But, uh, and then also, obviously, if you're not sub to the, these guys, then do that too. Aw. Thank you. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, James, uh, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, welcome back anytime. You're Austin-based, right? Yeah. Okay, that's going to be the trick. Well, maybe we'll do like a special Austin trip to go see my sister. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, we, yeah. We, well, well, we should we'll make it. We'll make it with Pixelation so we can actually do a video so there's no connection problems. We sh <laughs> right, yeah, that, and we should also... I said that in earnest and in good faith. <laughs> well, no, no, I, I, all I was thinking, all I was thinking whenever you said that was, whenever we actually do a video together, we need to, like, have me stop every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... Alright. But yeah, man, thank, thanks so much. I'll see y'all later. Cool. Yeah. Later. Easy. <laughs> Those slaps are loud on the on the mic. <laughs> e Honda. Oh yeah, you got me. All right. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. Uh, where are we on the list? We have Orville and Swamp Thing. Let's talk about the Orville. <laughs> I watched a few of the episodes in season two. All right. To to help with this conversation. What do you think? What do you think? It's good. Yeah. Just yeah. as good as season one. Thank you. Really? You yeah. Think, you thought it was funny? You thought it was a funny show? Um, the laughs come maybe one or two an episode. It feels like they had, like, a lot of good laughs the oh, first, the first season. one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think the humor... I don't, I don't judge it on its humor alone, because I didn't think the humor was carrying it in the first season. Uh, I didn't think it was carrying it, but I definitely thought it was part of its charm. Sure. Uh, I thought that it was, it was important to what they were trying to do, because Star Trek was so, um, uh, Star, uh, Star Trek... Everybody was so stilted. Mm -hmm. Everybody was so staid. And it felt like, in a lot of ways, you couldn't relate to them until they did something, like, way out of character. And it made those moments where the show was legitimately funny or legitimately heartbreaking that made those instances stand out. And why John Delancey... We don't need these anymore. <laughs> and, why, I just and, and why John Delancey was so much fun in the show is because despite the fact that he's literally a god, he might be one of the most relatable characters. Um, okay. 
So the Orville season two comes out and it's just like the bones of great comedy are in there, but they're just not like it's it seems like they had an idea for a joke and went with their first idea for every punchline. I agree and the with real you. obvious stuff. I agree with you on that one. And if because and I remember there was a scene, there's a scene where they're talking about how um uh what's his name? Borak? Borak? Borat. 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 <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, no, no, the guy that's, that's almost Klingon. Ah, uh, Bordis. Bordis. Yeah. Bordis. When he has to do his ritual pissing thing. And, like, he has to go to his home planet and, and take a leak for the one time a year that it happens. Uh-huh. And they have a, they're, they're at the little conference table, and, and, uh, the captain has to uh, give, uh, everyone the, the spiel, like, what we're doing. We have to go to his home planet, and he's telling him, and, and they frame it up so nicely for all these pissing jokes. Yeah. And then they give two at the very end of the of the conversation. Yeah. I mean it didn't have to dominate it, but it But it needed a, to be it needed to be a, a thing. It's also a silly idea for an episode, so it should be one of the funniest ones. Right. Um No, you're you're absolutely right. They they did not hit it out of the park as far as the humor is concerned. Here's the big problem. Uh oh. If it's not gonna be funny, uh huh. It should at least be good sci fi. And they <laughs> got lazy. Okay. No, like, I literally, like, so the, uh, spoilers, spoilers. Spoilers for the Orville season two. Okay. Uh, season two finale. Yeah. Um, so they are fighting the Kalon, Isaac's people. Um, and we're, we're in a, uh, we're in a mirror dimension. Oh God, this is spoilers for me. Yeah. I only watched like the first three episodes of season two. You can stop. I promise. <laughs> no, I'm enjoying it though. <laughs> okay, so they're fight. They're fighting Isaac's right. people. Yeah. Um, and they've uh, they they've lost quantum power. Mm-hmm. They can no longer go faster than the speed of light. Okay. They're uh, the the Kalon are closing in on them. Which, by the way, the Kalons actually have uh, pretty cool ships. Um, the K- uh, the Kalons are closing in on them, and they're in this they're in this system. That's really close to a black to a very small black hole. Okay. So uh, they're like they're, they're like we can't we can't outrun them. We're just gonna have to hide. And then somebody's like, "What about the black hole?" And then somebody else's uh, uh, somebody else is like, "We can't. The gravity will crush us." First off, not really. Mm-hmm. It'll stretch you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, which will which will also not be fun. Right. Um, so. Uh, they're, they're, and then Lamar, the smartest character, is like, let's go into the event horizon. He's the smartest character? Yeah. Oh, I think they do that. They talk about that in season one, I think. Yeah. Okay, I think you're right. Okay. They're, they're like, not if we go into the event horizon. The event horizon is the part of the black hole where light can't escape, so they won't be able to see us. I'm sorry? So, well, you see, what the event horizon of a, of a black hole is, is it's the... It's the point of no return. Right. You go into the, you. You're you're in the gravity. Okay. So you're actually in. Uh, what what black holes do is they accelerate every particle around them. Um, you're being accelerated by a black hole at the center of our galaxy right now. Sure. Every particle, every particle that you, that makes you up, and every particle you've ever interacted with, is under the influence of this black hole. Sure, 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 sure. You get close enough to the black hole. It starts accelerating you past the speed of light. Right. That point in which it starts doing that is called the event horizon. Yeah. Now the reason that you, the reason that they're called black holes is because it's because it's moving particles faster than the speed of light towards its center of mass. Um, there is par- no light. No particles. There's no particle in the universe that can move fast enough to escape it. Sure. Including big ass ship. Right. <laughs> So they go into the event horizon. Uh-oh. They wait there. They talk a little bit about time dilation, which was interesting. Uh-oh. Um, so, like, they they basically wait them out. It takes them five seconds, but they're gone nine hours. Yeah. Uh, not not a bad idea. But the thing is, is that while you're in there, you have to talk about why you're not spaghettifying and how you're getting quantum drive back online in order to escape. Right. Because they didn't. <laughs> they just kind of <laughs> flew out of a black hole can't do that. No, you can't. <laughs> you can't even fly away from it. Right. Even if you're not past the event horizon. Mm-hmm. Y- you have to you have to orbit it and gain speed and send 
Um, like, and the thing is, is that the solution for this, and I keep telling people this, is that I'm a crazy person who <laughs> <laughs> won't stop talking about the science of the Orville and, like, and, the, and the story structure. Uh -huh. The thing is, is that on that ship, you've got the Union's best pilot and the smartest human. Uh -huh. All right? Um, event horizons are not easily defined. We, we observe black holes based upon what we don't see around them. Correct. So... It should have had Lamar making calculations in order to figure out exactly where the event horizon was, and then Gordon taking those calculations and making a flight path where he's just circling this thing over and over again, daring the Kalons to get closer and closer to the event horizon until they find one little blip where, like, it does this. Because yeah, we don't know. <laughs> yeah. Where they find one little blip and it's like, if my calculations are correct, the way uh, the wavelength of the gravitational force is going to valley there. Punch it. Zoom. They go through a valley, a literal valley in the wavelength of the gravity. They go through it and like the sea of reeds in the Bible just smashes into the side of the K-line and they're gone. Cool. Would have been so much more exciting. Would have been so much smarter. And they couldn't. I made that up seconds after watching it. It took of, me no time. One of my favorite things to do <laughs> with you is just watch you rewrite stuff. Because you get so excited. <laughs> it just ain't that hard. No, they, they, they play a little fast and loose with science throughout the entire series. They were pretty good previously. Not too bad. Yeah, they had not been too the bad. The theoretical two-dimensional universe was cool. They had great stuff. Yeah. Mm. Sorry. Mm. Is it that one episode that bothers you the most? It's that one episode... That made me give up on the Orville. Oh, shit. Never again. Oh. Never again. Never again. You're Seth MacFarlane. Um, I think the problem. Yeah. This is, and, and this, this is good. This is another unkind thought. Uh-oh. I think that uh, Seth MacFarlane is in a really good place emotionally. <laughs> the yeah. Jaded, the jaded cynicism of his earlier works. Are, are gone. And I think money does that to you. He finds, uh, he finds the world harder and harder to complain about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the, 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 these, the stories so far in season two have all been personal stories. It's all about the characters themselves. They don't spend a lot of time on the science or, or anything fine. else. And no, I'm saying that's fine. I'm saying that's what, so far, my experience has been in season two, mm -hmm. is, is that you get these personal stories about the... Which I like, because especially the first chunk of the season one of, of Star Trek Next Generation didn't do this either. It was all about the science and the politics and whatever. I'm going to look up one thing. Go ahead. Um, but... Because I might be a little wrong. What about black holes? Yeah. I might be a little wrong. I just thought about it. What if the event horizon works a little bit differently than I thought? Can you escape? I'm going to I'm gonna figure out right now. And if I'm wrong, I'll cop to it. Here's and the I'll thing. I'll apologize to Seth MacFarlane on Twitter. Here's the thing about Science, space science. Uh huh. Astronomy. I always have to second guess myself before I say that word. And make cosmology. Sure, make sure I'm not going to say astrology. Say 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 cosmology. Cosmology. Yeah. Um, is it's it's. I think more so than a lot of stuff we experience here on, on Earth and are, and are more easily easily uh, witnessed is that space science is a little bit inexact because we're not we're not able to to witness things and, and see the evidence of everything up close, mm -hmm. which is part of the reason that, you know, stuff like on, uh, on dark matter and stuff like that is so hard to figure out. It's something we're never even going to be able to touch, see, or anything. Yeah, but the thing is, is that when, like, when they, when they do stuff like that, where we talk about things that we're currently not capable of, they, in Star Trek, and, and even in the Orville, they would talk. They would talk about how they fixed it. Right. You know, uh, supercomputers in Star Trek are uh, are a quick one. They uh, at the time they didn't know that we were going to move to uh, uh, to digital information um, at all. Right. A and so what they did was they essentially said, okay, everything's still on tape, but we're so technologically advanced, we can make tapes microscopic. Right. Yeah. So. <laughs> Like, you used to, like, literally put in, like, a VHS. Some of the early ones were VHS. You used to literally put, like, a VHS in your computer to run a rudimentary program. Mm -hmm. Now we can hold the largest library that you've ever seen of those VHS tapes in the palm of our hand. So they explained it. Mm -hmm. You know, they've actually they've been actually doing some really cool stuff with data and how they actually have been able to put data as small as, like, on a DNA, like on a DNA strand, like, something like that. Um, and they can they can do store 
Hold on, this is going to take just a little bit of my... Okay, so, uh, the event horizon is a sphere around a black hole from inside which nothing can escape its clutches. Hawking's is suggesting that the information about particles passing through it's uh, it's tra uh, trans uh, passing through is translated into a kind of hologram, a 2D description of a 3D object. It sits on the surface of the event horizon. The idea is that super translations are a hologram of the ingoing particles. Thus, they contain all of the information that would otherwise be lost. Basically, you see a photon go in, the radiation coming off of it kind of creates an afterimage. Um, so, how does that help something escape from a black hole? In the 1970s, Hawking introduced the concept of Hawking radiation photons emitted by black holes due to quantum fluctuations. Um, uh, originally, he said that the radiation carried no information from inside the black hole, but 2004 changes his mind, says it could be possible for information to get out. Just how this works is still a mystery, but Hawking thinks he cracks it. His new theory is that, uh, is that Hawking radiation can pick up some kind of information stored in the event horizon as it's emitted, providing a way for it to get out. But don't expect a message from within, he said. The information about ingoing particles is returned, but, uh, uh, but in a chaotic, useless form. Uh, this uh, this resolves the information paradox for all uh, for all practical purposes. Right. The information is so, lost. So as we understand black holes, based on Hawking's research, is that it is not possible what they did on the Orville. No. Yeah. It, well, the thing is, fix the quantum drive. You want to escape? Use space magic. I don't care. Just say something. <laughs> say one thing. Say, just say, oh, we learned that black <laughs> Like, have Seth MacFarlane turn to the camera and be like, by the way, we learned that black holes don't work like that in the future. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you would have loved that. <laughs> I really would have. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that, I, I don't think that stuff's going to bother me as much because, like I said, I, I'm enjoying the stories they're telling so far. Star Trek is supposed to teach you things. It is... They worked hard to make this sure This isn't that the Star Trek. It is Star Trek. That's what it was supposed to be. It was supposed to save us from whatever the hell NBC's putting out right now. <laughs> I didn't even watch it. What is it? Water Bears? Pretty sure it's Water Bears. Oh, okay. It's Water Bears. I have not seen any of the new Star Trek stuff. I will be watching the Picard, though. The Picard, though. The, the, the Picard, though. <laughs> okay, first I'm off, watching... they need to change the name it's of that Picard. show to Dat Picard, though. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will probably be watching that at some point. Will it be pirated? Yes. Maybe. Because <laughs> let me tell you something. Let's transition to our last topic. All right. Which is the swamp thing. All okay, right. Okay. And the, re the transition I'm making here is that... Another character I just don't care about. That's fine. That's fine. So here's the thing, though. What they're doing with swamp thing is that they're doing exactly what CBS... CBS All Access, yeah, CBS, is what they did when they, when they released, uh, and with what they're doing with their shows, they, they, even though it's a streaming platform and they can put all the episodes up at once, they don't. They put them out one, in, one a week. Right, so that you the, don't get the free, you don't get, you don't the free get a free pass. trial and watch and binge watch it all. Um, and I find that really annoying and frustrating. He, he, Which is why I don't want to give them CBS my money. Here's the thing about doing that to make sure that people stay with the service longer. I think that you would make more money. Oh wait, it's free trials. They do a free trials. They show month to month. Just keep it cheap. Yeah. Don't even do the trial. Just keep it cheap. Yeah, uh, three bucks. I'm gonna say at least five. You think? Yeah, because even like DC is like seven ish, seven eight. That's too much. I don't think so. Well, the, it's it's like oh, you get comics. No one cares about the comics part of it, but the shows they're putting out are not bad. I stopped watching Doom Patrol. Yeah. Yeah, because you know how I feel about the fourth wall breaking, and they're starting to do some of that, and it's re and they made a basically there's a scene where a mouse, a field mouse. Can you believe this guy? I'm sorry. <laughs> there's a field mouse, like his parents or something, his dad, the field mouse's parents gets run over by the van that the bus that uh uh Mr. the doc what's his name Mr. Robot, that's that's a show, Robot Man, yeah, Robot Man. He's driving the, the, the bus and it runs over the, the mouse parent. Then the, then mouse parent. And then twenty nineteen. <laughs> Forget mouse guard. This is mouse parent. Yeah. All right. New band name called it. <laughs> um, so there's a scene where the, the, the fucking mouse is talking to the, the they're talking to the narrator's talking to the mouse and the mouse is talking to the narrator. And that's where they lost me. Uh, that sounded cute. I hated it. I like that. And then you find out that that, that 
that the ro the the narrator is talk talks the mouse into seeking revenge on Robot Man, ro uh, so the mouse gets inside Robot Man and, is f and screws with the circuitry. Well, okay, the narrator's a real guy. He's the antagonist of the show. He is not Mister Nobody. He's not Mister Nobody. What is he? He's the narrator. Wait, so Mr. Nobody and the narrator are two different people? Yes. He references himself. He's like, oh, there's me. He does that in the first episode. There's no way. It's two different voices. It's not. It's Alan Tudyk. That voice is not Alan Tudyk. The narrator's not. It is. Okay, here's another thing I have. Al IMDB it. Okay, fine. You know what? I'll do it right here. All right. Because, like, I was really proud. But here, here's the problem. Uh-huh. I find the show very confusing. Partly because of this reason, and also they do weird time travel stuff, and it's really, really confusing. Okay. Um, and this is why you love Swamp Thing so much? No. I mean, it's less confusing. <laughs> <laughs> so, maybe. Really? Okay, Swamp Thing. Um, I, I, I don't know how, how out there they're going, but... Swamp Thing in the DC universe right now is like a magic character. And yeah. Well, I think it's like an occult thing, isn't it? Because him and, um, uh, what's his name? The leader of the uh, Justice League Dark. Batman. No. Um, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Constantine. John Constantine. Constantine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they, they have a thing going. Yeah, like, they, they work intimately because... Um, Swamp Thing is a manifestation of this thing called the green. Mm -hmm. And basically, it's the force, but only for plants. Yeah. Uh, and so that's what the Swamp Thing is. He's powered by the green. He's a guardian to this earth, uh, because this earth wants to perpetuate the green. The thing is, is that Poison Ivy is also like a keystone for the green. Um, and she's a bad guy, so it looks like... Oh, well, okay, actually, I'm okay with there being some moral ambiguity with... You know the actual will of the planet, especially when it relates to humanity. Um, but like, it's just wasn't it supposed to be like, oh, what if the swamp was so dirty that it could make a humanoid form? This thing, this swamp thing, and it's scary. Now it's now it's got like pals and like the force and just ugh. Well, this isn't the comics. This is the, this is the TV show. Yeah. So, did the TV show capture a little bit more of its heart? I think so, because I think the the original Swamp Thing isn't Alan Moore the originator. I'm not sure. Probably. That I, feels, I think, I that think feels gets, like an Alan Moore. I think he gets credited with a lot of the the essential Swamp Thing. In and that case, I could be wrong about the soul of Swamp Thing. If it's Alan Moore, it definitely could be convoluted and weird. <laughs> um, I could be wrong about that, but but in this one, they're going with that the. Uh, the, you don't know what's creating what's happening, but basically there's insanely fast-growing um, vines and things that are happening and killing people and stuff. Um, and, and you're led to believe in the first episode that it has to do with something with um, something that's man-made that is actually like a chemical they're putting into the swamp. Uh -huh. And then um, so there's some kind of biological thing that's happening, and they actually take a guy who, I can't remember his name, his last name's Holland. His name's Thing. It, yeah. His last name's Holland. Swamp Thing. And he, he, he gets basically swallowed up by this stuff, and, and that's what creates the Swamp Thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, but the first episode, my really, the big takeaway from this is that there's, it's too early to tell, and I can't tell you how good the Swamp Thing is because I haven't been able to see past episode one. The episode wow. one is just is just the uh, it's just the uh, pilot and it just kind of establishes some things. It's shot okay. It looks like better quality than stuff like the, like the Arrowverse and all that, like like the TV stuff. Yeah, it's I got much better quality. No patience for it. Anymore. Yeah, it's better quality. I feel like and I, from what I read, they put a lot of money into this show. It shows, especially the CG looks really well, really good. I mean, and and Swamp Thing itself looks good. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't have any problems with the visuals. The storytelling is fine, but they really haven't been able to flex their muscles yet because it's only episode one. Mm -hmm. um, but but I'm going to keep watching it. And if it sucks, I'm probably going to cancel my, my DC Universe uh, subscription. Yeah, do that. I might watch... <laughs> Stop giving them money. I might watch the first episode of Titans and see how that goes. Because apparently some people said that was good too. I mean, any, like, your... Teen Titans is like the Sailor Moon... 
of the DC universe, you've always got that crowd waiting. Yeah, they're out there. Right. I I'm actually I'm I'm off the I'm off the Titans train. Yeah. Yeah. They used to be they used to be my absolute. Favorite. I remember you saying that you really liked them. Um. So Doom Patrol, I I just don't think it's for me. Um, Swamp Thing is something I think is good. I'm gonna keep watching it. Titans, people say, all all three of these shows have been have been rated very well. So well, pe yeah. people, so the critics are enjoying them. Well, yeah, they were paid money to say that. They, maybe some of them were. Yeah, it's <laughs> they don't want not all of them. They get exclusive, like, hey, come come watch the first episode at our event with bacon wrapped shrimp. Would you like to come to another one? You know what you have to do. We're not going to tell you. But you why are we? Do. Why are we doing this for free then? We should. Be, I want some baking wrap shrimp. I think you have to have a degree in journalism. Really? Yeah, I think something like that. Uh, Frank or, has, Frank almost had one. There you go. I thought I thought she did. She might. And then, yeah, that's right. And her master's degree is library. Yeah, library science. Library science. Library yeah. Li Librarians mm -hmm. tech. Um, yeah. So maybe we just do that on the back of her. Yeah. Yeah. Degree. <laughs> Actually, we should create a new we could, person. We could ghostwrite for her. Yeah, there's, there's like it would be no work for her yeah. except the occasional conference call. Right, In, and I do a pretty good Frank impression. Yeah, you did one. Johnny. No, no, your sister did one. Did one. Johnny. Oh God, what are you doing? Feed the baby, Johnny. Feed the baby. Spot on. <laughs> Spot on. Oh. Unless a trail of butter comes for you. <laughs> Frank is very rarely on the show, but she's she's the queen of mixed metaphors, and it's my favorite. <laughs> she's starting to rub off on me. She's real stroke I, of miracle there. I started doing it too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's all our topics. Anything else you want to talk about? Uh, no, no. I'd really love to stop talking at the moment. Actually, that like, this show was like two hours, wasn't it? Uh, we've been recording for one hundred, one hundred. Um, one hour and 40 minutes. Okay. So, but 20 minutes of that was just me and James. Um, before we go, I would like to encourage you all that if you like this program, share it with your friends and also like, comment, and subscribe in any way uh, you see fit. We're on Twitch, we're on YouTube, we're on Facebook. So any way you want to do that, please do it. Uh, and until uh, next time, remember that this is the WarPod, the official podcast of the Warlocks Entertainment System, your one-stop shop for geek news around the Houston area and the world. And now I think it's time to say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody! Have fun. Push the button, Frank.